Hello, everyone. Thank you for being on time. Just a quick shout out before we start. We are giving away our latest book, Nature, Health, Happiness, on how connecting with nature can enhance well-being and mental resilience and help you live longer, happier, and healthier lives. Follow us on our Facebook and tell us one takeaway from this webinar. You may be one of the winners to win away uh, to win this book and a limited edition Age Well Every Day face mask. Welcome to the second Tao Tiang Sing lecture, The Ecology of Longevity, Longevity, Combining Traditional Chinese Medicine and Biomedical Perspective. Thank you for taking time and being here today. My name is May, Assistant Director of My Science Centre. Today's lecture is organized by the Mind Science Center and made possible by the generous donation from Mr. Tao Hing Tan and donors who supported our course to improve mental well being and build resilience across all ages. This is the second lecture in the series and it has grown from the first meeting at National Gallery in January last year when we had about 180 people to today where we have more than 350 people who have signed up for this webinar. My Science Center is the first in Asia to take an upstream and evidence-based approach to optimize cognitive performance, build emotional resilience, and promote mental well-being through translational research and community programs to improve quality of mind and quality of life. Fully dependent on donations and grants, My Science Center is a research center at NUS Yonglu Lin School of Medicine and National University Health System Center of Excellence. Our research and outreach activities are made possible by the generosity of our donors. It is our vision to nurture an undefeated mind and build mental resilience across all ages. Benjamin Franklin once said, a long life may not be good enough, but a good life is long enough. Living a long good life is a common wish for many. While the life expectancy in Singapore has risen to 83.66 years, and more than 1,300 people celebrated their 100th birthday, it is the quality of life at old age that matters most. My Science Center's Age Well Everyday program is an evidence-based multi-domain program to enable our seniors to age healthily and happily in place. This afternoon, we will hear insights from Professor Hong Hai on the evolving science of aging, combined with ancient Chinese wisdom to help us achieve what we all hope for in old age prosperity, fortune, and longevity. Fu Lu Shou. This will be followed by the panel discussion and a Q&A at the end of the session. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature. We'll also be sending you a link to the recording after the event. It is now my pleasure to introduce the chairperson of the webinar, Professor Kwa Yi Hyok. Professor Kwa is a Tan Gyok Hee Professor in Psychiatry and Neuroscience and Senior Consultant Psychiatrist at the Department of Psychological Medicine, Yonglu Lin School of Medicine, NUS, and advisor of the MySign Center. He is also one of the editors-in-chief of the seven-volume series on mental health and illness worldwide. Professor Kwa, please. Thank you very much, uh, May, and welcome to all of you to this seminar or webinar on the ecology of longevity. Um, with our special guest speaker, Professor Hong Hai. We have many friends and colleagues in Singapore um, listening from the comfort of your homes and even outside of Singapore, as far north as uh, Ipoh and Penang, Moa and Batu Pahat, and further south uh, in Sydney and even Melbourne. So we have a wide group of people around the region listening to this webinar. And before I introduce Professor Hong Hai, I want to say a few words about the Tan Tian Sing lecture series. Um, the late Tao Tian Sing was a Hainanese seaman. He belonged to the um, pioneer generation. He worked for the British Merchant Navy um, and later the Royal Dutch, a shell company for many years. And he imbued in his children a sense of care, compassion, empathy, and generosity, which are invaluable values uh, for all of us, especially in this time of the pandemic. And his son, 
Mr. Tao Hing Tan also supports the uh, Mind Science Center in our endeavor to build mental resilience in youth and, and seniors here in Singapore. The first Tantin Singh uh, distinguished speaker was uh, Professor Norman Sartorius, who last year uh, came uh, from um, Geneva. He was the former director of mental health in Geneva, and he, um, and he spoke on mental resilience. Today, we have a, a very distinguished speaker, uh, Professor Hong Hai, um, who will speak on the ecology of longevity. Um, and for those who know uh, Hong Hai um, in academia, he was the former dean of the business school. And those in politics will know him as the um, member of parliament and also chairman of the government uh, parliamentary committee on health. And those in the business world will know him as the CEO of the Harper group of, of companies. He took a sabbatical to go to China to study traditional Chinese medicine and obtain a, a doctorate of medicine from the uh, distinguished or eminent uh, Beijing University. And later move on to, um, to uh, Cambridge and to London for a PhD on the history of medicine and philosophy. He has written four books on, on TCM and the last book is something very interesting on politics and culture. I've met um, Hong Hai uh, 55 years ago when he first came back from, um, from New Zealand. He was trained as an engineer and he was um, back in his alma mater uh, in Moa High School. I was then an uh, A-level student and the principal wanted him to, to inspire all of us. And all of us were in, indeed very inspired by the, the, by the uh, scintillating intellect of, of this person. And I've come to know him um, over the last few years, especially here in our work, and very glad that he continues to, to pursue uh, this, this interest in, in TCM. Now, many of us are trained in Western medicine, and we all live in silos because when you go to work in a community in the uh, heartlands of uh, Ang Mo Kio or Topayo, the patients would ask you, doctor, can I eat uh, Lin Zhi or is durian heaty for my, for my sore throat? I mean, so how do we bridge this, this um, two differences, one Western trained medicine and one traditional medicine? So today, um, Professor Hong Hai will cast some light on how we can bridge this two, two wide world you know, of, of medical care. <coughs> Shall we welcome Professor Hong Hai, please? Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Tao Hing Tan, Professor Kwa Yi Hock, Professor John Wong, Sir Tan Che Hoon. First, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Tao Hing Tan and the NUS Mind Center for the opportunity to speak to you today on a subject close to my heart, which is how to live a long, healthy and fulfilling life. The subject of today is not just longevity, but it is, and some, some of you will argue, what is the point of having a long life if you're unhealthy, if you are, if you are having dementia or you're infirm. So today we'll talk about longevity with good quality of life, how it might be possible to achieve that. Before that, let's uh, talk about a more esoteric subject, the subject of Immortality. Since time immemorial, people have asked the question, is there an elixir of life that having imbibed, we could live forever? Qin Shi Huangdi, the first emperor of China, had his physicians scour the earth in search of it, but in vain. In Western 
culture, there is the philosopher's stone that people have been looking for that would give us immortality. This hope was dashed some 2,000 years ago when the Chinese medical classic called the Huang Ti Neijing or the Emperor's Canon of Medicine which declared that immortality is unattainable. The men are mortal. It opined that men's natural lifespan averages about 100 years. But most of us fail to meet this target. And the Neijing says it's only because we do not look, out, look after ourselves properly. There are actually two paths to longevity. One, which is the modern medical interventions. And there's a lot of research work being done today. Drugs like metformin, resveratrol, stem cell treatments to prolong life, sometimes by lengthening the telomeres of our DNA. These may confer longevity, but it's not clear that it comes with health and quality of life. The other more natural way to longevity is through lifestyle. Lifestyles that keep us healthy in body, in spirit. And according to the Huang Ti Neijing, people do not live long lives only because they do not look after themselves properly. So today we will focus our attention, our attention on the second method of longevity, lifestyles. On how the human beings in nature are really part of an ecosystem. And we optimize lifespan by prudent management of this ecosystem. What is the genesis of health problems? Why do most people not live to 100 years? As it turns out, it's because of a change in a radical change in our lifestyle. Look at this picture here. We were evolved as hunter gatherers. Human beings were evolved over a million years as hunter gatherers. They hunted, they gathered food. They did not live sedentary lifestyles. But over the last few centuries, especially with the industrial revolution, we stopped using our arms and legs to do manual work. We spend more and more time on sedentary work, sedentary occupations. And the ultimate is this geek here, you know, whose eyes are glued to a screen. That kind of sedentary life is in fact the genesis of all health problems. You see, what happened in the Industrial Revolution was that there was a, it escalated our physical decline. Machines did work for us. But not only that, it came with dietary and food source changes. We farmed and we created artificial food. And even more important, human beings were subjected to long stress periods. In the old days, when we were hunter-gatherers, the only stress that our forefathers suffered was when they were chased by a tiger or wild animal or they were hunting. It was a period of intense stress where the sympathetic nervous system poured adrenaline and it was fight or flight. But these were very short stress periods that lasted minutes, at the most 10, 15 minutes, and either tiger gets you or you get the tiger or you get run away. But today we live lives where stress is prolonged. It starts from the day you wake up for the morning, you wake up, you look at your mobile phone, you're reminded of emails, you switch on the news and you get depressing news of how Trump is gaining in the elections. Or the phone rings, or you go into the MRT and you jostle with people on the train. And stress never really stops. Even when, when people eat, they are thinking of something. They really relax when they eat. They have breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, dinner meetings. So this kind of prolonged stress 
puts a different kind of demand on the human body for which we were not evolved. We were evolved to be net net hunter gatherers, but not for the kind of modern living that we now have. So if you look at this chart here, where my arrow is, in the past, we walk, we gather, we hunt. Today, we have machines, sedentary jobs. In the past, we have shortened stress. Today, we have prolonged stress, unremitting stress. In the past, we had whole foods, foods that were grown in nature. Today, we have processed foods and we have a lot of sugar in our diet. In the past, we naturally turned to herbs, natural growing herbs as medication, as medicine. Today, we have huge number of pharmaceuticals. Many of them come with serious side effects. Now, you can say that we cannot go back to the hunter-gatherer life. But there are indeed people in the world who have lifestyles that in some way are similar to hunter-gatherers. And let's begin with the famous blue zones, the blue zones of the world. Now, the blue zones of the world, there are uh, five or six of them, seven maybe. Where people live well past 90 years, most of them. Many of them live to over 100. They have the highest rate of centenarians in the world. They include Sardinia in Italy, Okinawa, Japan, Loma Linda, California, Costa Rica, South America, Ikaria, an island of Greece, and I've added Parma, which is a, a very idyllic village in Guangxi, China. Now, what do we find in the blue zones? What is the style of living? <clears throat> Why do they live healthily past the age of 90 and many live to well over 100? First, they are physically active. But when they're physically active, we don't mean that they go for a five kilometer, kilometer jog every day, no. They only keep moving. They do not necessarily have vigorous cardiovascular exercises, but they use the limbs, not machines. They walk a lot, they do work and they move around. They're on the move all the time. There's also a strong sense of community spirit in the blue zones, you'll find all of them. They have a sense of community, a sense of belonging, which is very important for the human spirit. Thirdly, they do not have prolonged stress. They do not have the prolonged stress that harms our parasympathetic nervous system and, and cause huge, serious chronic problems, chronic disease problems. You find it in the blue zones too, they have passion for the living. There's a reason to live, or in Japanese it's called ikigai. They wake up in the morning and they look forward to the day because they look forward to seeing their friends, seeing the community, doing about their household chores and seeing the, their relatives and, and doing things that they like. And interestingly, in the blue zones, <clears throat> there's no common healthy diet. There is no such thing as the ultimate healthy diet for the blue zones. They vary from vegetarians in Loma Linda, California, with no alcohol, to plenty of lamb and red wine in Sardinia, Italy. This is something to note. There is no common healthy diet in the blue zones. Here's a picture of Parma, Guangxi, 2,000 meters above sea level. You see this elderly lady there, she still goes to the river to fetch water. Ikaria, a very interesting island of, of Greece. It has an extraordinary number of centenarians. In fact, it has been called the island where people forget to die. One interesting feature of Ikarians is every day without fail, after work, they gather in the city square and they play music and they dance. They dance together. They dance together for maybe an hour or two. 
mix, have a good laugh, a good exercise, and enjoy the music. That kind of sense of community. It's probably the most important factor in the blue zones. That sense of community, the sense of lust for life. Now, what is the Chinese view? The Chinese view of longevity with good quality life is encapsulated in the term yang shen. Yang shen means cultivate life. It is not just health preservation, it's not just cultivating health. It is a holistic cultivation of life to enjoy its full richness with physical health, tranquil mind, fulfilled spirit. I shall argue that the Chinese yang shen style of living is not very far from that of the blue zones, but let's see what yang shen prescribes for us. <clears throat> Here are some aspects of Yang Shen in Chinese culture. You notice that it is not just cultivating the body, which is Yang Shen, which is through diet, exercise, regular living. It also involves cultivating the heart to achieve calm, tranquility, command over your emotions. Cultivating character, Yang Xin, example, developing resilience, you know, which the Mind Sense Center is very much involved in, developing character, resilience. And surprisingly, cultivating morals. Cultivating morals is very part, um, part of Yang Shen. In other words, cultivating a loving, benevolent heart. Now you might say, what's having a benevolent heart got to do with long life and health? Indeed, it has been found, and there was a PhD thesis done at Cambridge by this guy, Thapchen Jinpa, who is a Tibetan monk. It's called A Fearless Heart. It's, it's been written up in a book, and I strongly recommend you read it. It provides clinical evidence that people with a compassionate heart and are engaged in benevolent acts, that this has long-term beneficial effects on the brain and results in a more emotionally healthy and therefore overall healthy person. Now, put it in a paradoxical way, you have to be unselfish in order to achieve the selfish motive of long life and health. To, to be unselfish, to be benevolent is good for you. So it is, it is in your selfish self-interest to be benevolent and to have a lot of love in your heart. And last of all, cultivating the spirit. In Chinese, we call shen. Cultivating the spirit is more than cultivating the mind. It is the spirit, you know. The, it's not, not spirit, ne spirit uh, necessarily in the religious sense, but it is a higher attainment of the human mind that one gets from great music, from meditation, from mindfulness, and so on. So Yang Shen is holistic, it covers many aspects of our life. But how do we do it? How do we achieve Yang Shen? There's a great deal in the Huang Ti Neijing on Yang Shen, but I've tried to capture it in four main points. First, <clears throat> you must nourish the mind and the spirit. Actually, this is probably more important than everything else, your mind, your spirit. You must nourish it, cultivate it. Secondly, regularity in living habits, early to bed, early rise, and so on. Third is daily exercise. And in Chinese Yang Shen, we are talking about walking, breathing, and qigong. Walking can be Yang Shen walking, can be qigong walking, where you, you, you take where you pay attention to your head, to your breath, you pay attention to your surroundings. It is what today we call mindful walking. Breathing, how you breathe. And Qigong exercises, which I think most of you know a little bit about. The Qigong exercises also involve the mind and breathing. And there is no call in Yang Shen for intensive cardiovascular exercises. Now, cardio, intensive cardiovascular exercises may be good for the young, maybe the middle age, but very intensive cardiovascular exercise may not necessarily be very good for the, for the elderly or, or for the more senior citizen. And lastly, moderate and appropriate diet. It, just, it doesn't say a particular diet, but moderate 
and appropriate to your constitution. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, these four pillars of Yangshan. Nourishing the mind and spirit. Traditionally, Chinese culture has talked about qi qin shu hua, which is Chinese chess, but it's also uh, uh, the, the other more complicated uh, form of chess, which challenges your mind, but also calms your spirit because people who play, play qi, they know how to keep calm, to be tranquil while in the face of challenges. Qin, which is music, music, has tremendous beneficial effects on the mind and the spirit. And there was a Yangshan master called Qi Kang during the uh, Wei Jin Wei Chao period, who's, who famously said, I can live one day without food, but I cannot live one day without music. Shu is calligraphy. Calligraphy is something that involves the mind, involves your qi of your body, device control over the movements of a hand. And that combination of concentration, qi development, and mind concentration is salutary to the human body. Hua, of course, we all know, painting, watercolors, painting landscape, gives a nourishing of the spirit and the mind that is hard to find elsewhere. Regularity seems very simple, but in fact, it's a very important part of Yang Shen. And here I like to cite this Qing Emperor, Qianlong, Qianlong Emperor from the Qing Dynasty. Qianlong's life habits are well documented. He would rise at five o'clock in the morning, take a light breakfast, dress up, and at six o'clock, he holds court. It's too bad if you're a late riser. Work begins at six o'clock in the morning. Everybody comes to court, and court begins at six and goes all the way to 2 p.m., eight hours. He goes eight hours working. Of course, he has brief periods where he drinks some tea and takes some snacks. And at 2 p.m., no more work. He goes to his garden, plays with his concubines, practices archery, does qigong, writes poetry, has an early dinner and he's asleep by nine o'clock. Chen Long reigned for 60 years and died at the age of 88. A remarkable achievement. Remember, Chinese emperors have very stressful lives. Most of them lived to only the, in their 50s, but Chen Long lived to 88. And part of his secret was regularity. Now we know now from Nobel Prize winners about the circadian cycle. They won the Nobel Prize in 2017. That the body has a circadian cycle. And if you follow the body's natural cycle, there are immense physiological benefits to living a regular life. That, you know, that, that you wake up at a certain time, eat at a certain time, sleep at a certain time. So regularity is a, in fact a very important part of um, Yangshan. Exercise. Here, let me say a little bit about Qi Kong and Tai Chi Chen. Qi Kong and Tai Chi Chen do not just help you to stretch your muscles. It not only improves your balance, but it also improves alertness of your mind. And clinical trials have shown that Tai Chi Chen, Tai Chi, can prevent falls improve cognitive functions and has, is known to help with Parkinson's disease and also with the COPD patients. The Tai Chi Chen is not easy to master, but if you can, it is probably the best exercise that I can possibly recommend to anyone. Finally, diet. The Huang Tian Ching says, don't eat till you are full. Just eat 70 to 80% food. Leave yourself a little bit hungry. You'll get used to it, I know. I know you'll say, oh, I'm not really full. But if you get used to it, you'll find it can be done. 70, 80% full. Eat grains of different colors, different kinds, fruits and vegetables. 
Third, it's very important, you must have a diet that suits your constitution, your age, your activity, your climate. In other words, there is no one-size-fits-all diet. It depends on your individual constitution, your age, the kind of activities you engage in. And finally, tonics. When we take tonics to improve our qi blood, it must be appropriate for the age and also the nature of deficiencies. A little later on in this talk, I will spend a little bit time of time on tonics. Right? So these are the four pillars of Chinese Yangshan. Now let us compare lifestyles in the blue zones with Chinese Yangshan. And you'll find that there is a surprising similarity, consonants. See, look at, see where my arrow shows. Regular schedules facilitate communal activities. You know, if you all wake up at different times and sleep at different times, you're not going to be able to engage in communal activities. Right? So regularity becomes a way of living in the blue zone so that they can participate in communal activity. Chinese Yangshan, regularity in living habits, right? Physically active, but not vigorous cardiovascular exercise necessarily in the blue zones. Chinese Yangshan, Qigong exercises, nurturing qi, countryside walks, things like gardening. Low stress levels in the blue zones. Chinese Yangshan says have very simple needs, do not have great ambition. Just be happy, be contented with what you have. Diet. In the blue zones, there is no common diet. It varies from vegetarian to meaty diets. Chinese Yangshan says, diet must fit your individual constitution and your climatic environment. In the blue zones, people are mentally and spiritually active. They're singing, dancing, close communal interactions and these are known to, to delay the onset of dementia. In Chinese Yangshan, they engage in calligraphy, painting, chess, music. Keeps the mind and the spirit youthful, even into, into old age. So you see, the age-old wisdom of the Huangdi Neijing has been rediscovered in the blue zones of the world. There are many people who now visit the blue zones and try to emulate the lifestyle. It's not very easy, but it can be done. Let me now say a little bit about what is a healthy diet for us? And this is a question that I get very often. What is the healthy diet you know, for, for me or for everyone? Well, there are many popular Western diets and there, there is so much variation in claims of what is a healthy Western diet that many of you must be very thoroughly confused. There used to be a very popular diet called the Atkins diet, which is low in carbo, high in protein, and, eat, and you can eat a lot of, quite a bit of saturated fats. Then there is the vegetarian, the vegan diets, which has been claimed by followers of the diet to be a panacea for almost all chronic illnesses. There's an Ornish diet, Dale Ornish, an American dietitian scientist. His diet is very much similar to the vegetarian diet, but it includes eggs without yolk. It claims to be heart healthy, controls diabetes, lowers blood pressure and so forth. And take whole grain carbohydrates, it can be as much as 65%. Then there is the Mediterranean diet, <clears throat> which emphasizes a lot of plant foods, fresh fruits, dessert, beans, lots of nuts, cereals, sorry, cereals, and moderate um, cheese, olive oil, and moderate amounts of fish and poultry. Now, my understanding is that most Western physicians now recommend the Mediterranean diet as the best diet for preventing cardiovascular disease and diabetes and for building stronger bones or for delaying dementia. But if you look at the blue zones, the diets vary a lot. Okinawans eat a lot of vegetables, but they eat a lot of fat pork too. If you go to Okinawa, you'll find that pork is one of the favorite dishes of the Okinawans. Sardinians eat a lot of lamb and they drink four glasses of red wine a day, you know, but they are shepherds. They walk up and down mountains 
tending to sheep, so they burn up a lot of calories. And reputedly, Sardinia is the only place, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an area of Sardinia called Canano. Sardinians are the only, it's the only place in the world where the men have longer lives than the women. And they think it's because of the wine they drink, the red wine they drink called Canonau wine. Canonau being the region of Sardinia where they live. Ikeria is the, the Greek island. They follow the Mediterranean diet. Seven-day Adventists in Loma Linda are vegetarian, no alcohol, no tea, no coffee. What does Chinese Yangshan say? Chinese Yangshan says, have a diet that suits your individual constitution and your living and environment. There's no one-size-fits-all diet. Cultural evolution and climatic differences actually determine the diets that fit our environments. And, and somehow human beings learn to, to find the kind of diet that fits their lifestyle and their climate. If you see Sichuan people in Sichuan, they eat a lot of hot and spicy food because it induces sweating. Why? Because Sichuan has a very damp climate. And in Chinese terminology, if there's a lot of dampness, you must have some perspiration to get rid of dampness in your body. Mongolians live very hard, harsh lives, or at least Mongolians of old. They drank horse milk, ate lamb, and ate sweet fruits. It ate, ate, ate a lot of meat. Southerners in China are more genteel. They use less oil and salt, suitable to a warmer climate, and for the artistic pursuits among the gentry. The gentry tend to be in the south. Northerners in China live in cold climates. They excelled in war and martial arts. So they tended to eat more salty and oily foods. So the diet depends on where you live, how you live, and your constitution. Finally, let me say a little bit about tonics for seniors. Why do seniors need to take tonics? As we age, our organs and our physiological functions start to decline. It's known as senescent, senescence, not aging, but senescence. Chronic illnesses start to begin, arteriosclerosis, metabolic syndrome, osteoporosis, arthritis, and cancer appear at a higher rate after the age of about 60. The tonics give us a way of fighting the odds by strengthening the organs, and strengthening the physiological functions that are inclined. That's why tonics in, the, in, in Chinese is called bu, bu, bu yi, bu yao. Bu, actually the composition of the word bu comes from yi, which is, see where the arrow is, which is your clothes, and the sound is bu. So it is actually bu yi, mending your torn clothes to make them good again. It's, it's, it's a restoration of health. So Chinese TCM actually means to replenish the body that has some deficiency, which is called Xi. Now, what kind of deficiencies can we have? Just very quickly and generally, we can have deficiency in Qi, in blood, in yin or yang. Let me talk a little bit more about this. Uh, I don't have time today to describe to you all the symptoms of Qi and blood deficiency, but I think most of you have a little, some inkling of what it is. If you're lacking in qi, you know, you tend to be tired, a bit pale, lacking in energy, and afraid of cold. Well, qi tonics are things like Chinese yam, millet, chicken, peanuts. The struggles is called huang qi or bei qi or pake, ginseng, gan chao or licorice. Blood tonics, pork liver, sea cucumber, raisins, longan, red days, tang kui, hershaw. Yin tonics, people who are deficiency in yin, tend to feel warm, hands are warm, they tend to be very thirsty all the time. So you have some internal heat, but it's, it's a deficiency heat due to the deficiency in yin. Such people will benefit from things like white fungus, bird's nest, black sesame, wolfberry, turtle, duck, lily bulb, and an orchid stem known as shihu or dendobrium. Very good yin tonic. Yang tonic, Person who is lacking in yang, uh, feel cold, feel tired, tend to be a bit pale. And for men, they tend to have erectile dysfunction. And you can, you can uh, 
find very common young tonics like chives. Chives is a good, jiu chai, gu chai. Walnuts, lamb, shrimp, seahorse, tu zhong, which is a bark of a tree, wines, cordyceps, or tong chong chao, and horny goat grass. Now, how can we combine the best of both worlds? Supposing we accepted the Western cardiovascular doctor's recommendation that we follow a Mediterranean diet, right? But can we follow the Mediterranean diet and also follow the DCM recommendations regarding your constitution? If you're weak in cheat, you should take more of this. If you're weak in blood or your yin is weak, can we combine the two so that we are following both the Mediterranean diet, but also following DCM recommendations? The answer is yes, of course we can. Why? Because within the range of foods in the Mediterranean diet, you have many choices. So if you are weak in cheat, you can choose the foods within the Mediterranean diet that is rich in cheat. They can tonic, tonify your cheat. So here I've given, I'm giving you an example. And we'll go through it in a little bit detail, combining Mediterranean and Chinese diets. In each example, the Mediterranean diet is followed, but the choice of food differs according to the person's constitution. So I've taken the example of one person who is weak in qi, qi weakness, meaning he's pale, afraid of cold, his pulse is what we call si mai, which is a bit thready, like a thin thread. The other person has yin deficiency, feels warm, thirsty, eyes are dry, gets hot flashes, and sometimes night sweats, sweating at night in your sleep. Now, this is quite common among uh, menopausal women to have hot flashes, dry eyes, dryness in the mucous membrane, uh, and they feel very vexatious. But it, ha it happens in men too, people who are overstressed or who have been out in the hot sun, sweat too much, lose too much perspiration, they can also develop yin deficiency. So I've taken two persons, one with a qi deficiency, one with yin deficiency. They both want to follow the Mediterranean diet, but what should they do according to the recommendation of the Chinese this year, right? Well, look at the different types of grain they can take. For grain, for qi weakness, the, the grains that are good uh, well, the yam is not a grain, but it's a carbohydrate. Chinese yam, millet, uh, peanuts, mm -hmm. uh, chicken should really be, be under meat, sorry. And for the yin deficiency person, buckwheat, bihun, rice porridge. They're better for yin deficiency. Vegetables and fruits. The qi weakness person can have peanuts, raisins, spinach, red dates, long run. All these are qi tonics. For the yin deficiency person, white fungus, pokli, pai uh, muer, black sesame, hei uh, zima, watercress, bitter gourd, one of my favorites, ku kua, black beans. What meats can you take? For the qi deficient person, chicken, pork, liver, sea cucumber. For the person who is warm and dry, duck, turtle, bird's nest. The yin deficiency person has got more expensive taste. No? You need turtle and bird's nest. Alcohol. You can drink alcohol, both qi and yin deficient. But for the, for the qi deficient person, rice wine, yellow wine, a bit of red wine is fine. But for the yin deficient person, because the person is already a little bit warm, so the alcohols that are a little bit more cooling are beer, and dry light white wine, apple cider. These are a little bit more cooling. Even teas, not all teas are the same. Wulong and poor are warmer teas. They are good for people who have qi weakness because the people who are qi weakness are afraid of cold. Whereas for people who have yin deficiency, they are warm and dry. Green tea is good for them. Jasmine, actually jasmine is a green tea. Jasmine is a form of green tea. Chrysanthemum tea. And as for herbal supplements, for qi, weakness, astragalus or pake, tangkui, Chinese yam or huai shan, 
and Chinese ginseng. And for the yin division, wolfberry, keiji, lily bulb, or, or, or uh, by her, yi zhu, uh, Cantonese called yokchuk, maktong, maitong, and notice American ginseng. You notice Chinese ginseng for the cheap weakness, American ginseng for the yin weakness. They are very different. Don't think that American ginseng and Chinese ginseng are the same. They are actually quite different. Quite different species with quite different health benefits. Chinese ginseng is warm. It, it, gives, it strengthens the qi, but it also calms the mind and can improve cognition. American ginseng is cool, so if you're dry, hot, it helps to moisturize you. And it also gives you some qi. Uh, as some extra cheap. So you can see from this simple example that we can study Chinese tonics, Chinese diet, dietary recommendations and combine it very well with Western, your, your preferred Western diet because there is so much choice of foods and if we took the trouble to learn which ones are qi tonics, which ones are yin tonics, we can find the combination that best suits us. So in a nutshell, modern living civilization violates the conditions under which human beings evolve in nature as hunter gatherers. We had what, what I called earlier a, a drastic environmental mutation. The, the, environment, the environment mutated from hunter gatherer to sedentary living, but our genes, our bodies never mutated because it was too short a time, a couple of hundred years. In the blue zones, we have preserved some of the good aspects of lifestyle of our hunter-gatherer evolutionary origins. That's why people in blue zones live very long lives and healthy lives. Chinese Yangshan achieves pretty much the same objectives by advocating regular, regularity in living, avoiding prolonged stress, eating in moderation, but eating what suits our constitutions in our climates and exercising to strengthen qi, and very important to nourish the spirit. It is appropriate for us to take tonics in our senior years because we need to overcome senescence, which is the decline in the physiological functions of our organs. And uh, the appropriate use of tonics can in fact help us to achieve longevity uh, and a better quality of life. I'll put it more succinctly by the Tibetan lady. The secret to living well and longer is eat half, walk double, laugh triple, and love without measure. And a living example of Yangshan is my friend, Captain Ho Wing To of the Flying Tigers. Captain Ho flew during the Second World War against the Japanese in China. He was part of the, these fearless pilots called the Flying Tigers. He survived the war, emigrated to Malaysia, then to Singapore, became a trainer for Singapore Airline pilots. And over here, who is in his late 70s, friend of mine, which is my classmate, was a SIA captain, was his student in SIA. Here's Captain Ho, looking hale and hearty at 100. And the last time I spoke to him, he was telling me about the US elections and how he preferred Biden because he thought Biden may be fairer to the Chinese because he's loyal to China. But he's still hale and hearty. Until a couple of years ago, he was still actively dancing. I think he dances less now, but he could still do a little cha-cha. 100 years old and going strong. Uh, if you need more details of some of the tonics I've talked about in diet, uh, I, have, I have written a book which I use in my classes, 
pursuing the elixir of life. Thank you very much.